You know, I, I don't remember exactly the first time, um, but, uh, you know, we were, we were, I was playing around with a neighbor, um, you know, who I grew, up, I grew up with. He was older and, and what have you, but, uh, you know, he would just, um, you know, and at the time I was more interested in what Mickey Mantle was doing on the ball field than uh, what was happening uh, with sex. I mean, I didn't know really much about it. Um, and, uh, and I remember one time playing in his backyard uh, and he kind of forced me into this garage and uh, all of a sudden there we were and he was, you know, forcing me to do something that I didn't want to do. And then and I backed off and he said, that's okay, that's okay. Um, I, will, uh, I will just do it to you. Um, and so that's kind of how it started. And, uh, you know, I remember when he was done, I got up and ran home, which wasn't all that far away. Uh, and, uh, you know, just thinking, you know, I, I didn't know what to think, um, you know. And, uh, and then, you know, gradually, you know, it would happen more frequently uh, over time. Um, and then it was interspersed with, you know, my continuing to say, no, this is not, you know, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this, this is wrong. And he would always say, you know, it's okay, it's okay. You know, the, the father, uh, the priest does the same thing to me. Um, and, um, you know, and it went on for a couple of years. So there was, it didn't happen every day, uh, it didn't happen every week. Um, and, you know, I would get into periods of time where I would uh, um, uh, avoid um, being with him at all. And I would, or I would be with other friends in the neighborhood. Uh, at the time, you know, our neighborhood had a lot of kids the same age, so um, he wasn't the only person for me to hang out with. Um, and then, you know, he would, gra he would also just say, you know, why don't you come down to the church? Why don't you come down to the church? Um, and he said, you know, we just play cards. Uh, and then, you know, I would say no, and then later I would find out that the cards were strip poker. Um, and at the time, um, I had already, per I, I think we had to purchase them our cassock and surplus, they were called, which was the black and white um, uh, robe that um, older boys wore. And I was studying Latin uh, to, to, because of it, back, back then the, the masses were all said in Latin. Uh, and so I was studying that and you know, wanting to become a priest and my uncle, uh, my great uncle was a priest uh, and I wanted to become an older boy and then when I knew that I had to keep going down to the church that, and that something was going on there, you know, that I wasn't a part of, um, I didn't want to put myself in that position. So I just stopped. And probably till the day my dad died, he wondered why I stopped uh, wanting to become an altar boy. I've never talked about this in public. Um, I, um, I, um, Never talked about it. Uh, I never talked about the abuse until about a year ago. And I think that what's hard for people to understand is that stuff gets buried so deep that you don't always put everything together all at the same time. And I really didn't. I really didn't focus on. I just was dealing with the abuse by the friend. I wasn't really dealing with the the, the church stuff. Um, really, until the grand jury came out. Um, and then all of a sudden it hit me that what had, what had transpired. Um, and I, um, I talked to my therapist about it. And uh, then I talked to uh, Tracy, uh, the woman uh, who I had mentioned, uh, and told her about it. And she said, well, you have to, you have to say something. You know, you, um, you know, this is your chance to, to you know, get it all out so you feel better. Um, and so she was very supportive of my uh, efforts to do that. Um, but then, you know, again, and, uh, how things come to you in bits and pieces. I, I don't remember ever watching the movie Spotlight, um, but I watched it about two, three weeks ago uh, on a weekend. And it was the first time in 50 years that I had ever thought about strip poker. Uh, when I heard it mentioned in there. And then all of a sudden I thought, oh my God, that, that, that's what he wanted me to do. Uh, and so, you know, it kind of comes over you in waves that, uh, 
the information, um, you know, bits and pieces come out. I know having served in the legislature, there's always, there's always an excuse, there's always a reason to vote no. Uh, and to not address something that's a difficult subject to address. So um, in this case, it's the constitutionality of the retroactive clause. Um, I have read uh, a number of um, uh, opinions by, by uh, constitutional scholars who say it is entirely permissible that the legislature can uh, do this if they want. It's been done in other states. Uh, and so I think that uh, the House is going to overwhelmingly uh, take that position. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that the Senate uh, will see the wisdom in the House vote and will take it up as well. Um, you know, change is hard, uh, whether it's change regarding this or it's change about something else. It's difficult for legislative bodies. They're not, they're not meant to move quickly. Uh, and certainly you can make the case that this legislature has dragged its feet on addressing this issue. Um, but um, I, think the, I, think, I think the abuse is so overwhelming now and the grand jury report was so thorough uh, and detailed uh, so many uh, ac actions on behalf of, uh, by the perpetrated on the victims that um, to me it wouldn't even be a close call whether I was Catholic or not uh, or whatever. Um, this, is, this should be an easy vote. Um, and, um, and I'm hoping that um, that, that happens in the Senate because I'm, I'm more than sure that uh, Representative Razi has done the work necessary uh, to get it passed in the House.